Hi everyone and welcome back to this last pet pairing of the year. I think it's only fitting that for my last pet pairing this year I'm going to do my top two favorite palettes that have been released this year that I have personally purchased and those are Hitopian Dream and Celestial Odyssey. But before we get into that, as usual, I'm just going to do a bunch of my face makeup together with you. Starting off with my top one makeup release this year and that is Glow Lust by Auric. And I wanted to mention something because I'm so mad at myself for forgetting to um, make a specific point about this product that is a very um, unique feature to it that I completely blacked out about when I was talking about my yearly favorites video, um, which I can link up here if you haven't seen it yet. But basically I said this is my favorite product of the year because it has such a unique formula and I find it to be so hydrating and so illuminating. But what I completely forgot to mention, like it completely escaped my mind, is to mention that it has a little bit of coverage to it, which, make it, which makes it so unique amongst these types of products. A lot of these types of illuminators, including my beloved um, Strobe by MAC, which I also really love and enjoy and I think it's very hydrating, the thing with strobe is strobe doesn't have any sort of coverage to it because it's completely transparent with a little bit of shimmer through it. Whereas this has not only the hydrating factor, but it also has the tiniest bit of coverage. And I'm not talking about concealer type of coverage or even light foundation type of coverage. I'm talking more like a tinted moisturizer type of coverage, but it's still enough for me, for the area of my face where I use it, to feel like it not only provided hydration but it also covered a little bit of whatever like veins and darkness I might have going on underneath there. So there, I felt like it was really important to get it off my chest that I forgot to say that about Auric Glow Lust because it is one of the most important things that I enjoy about this product. Have you come to join us, Mona? Oh no, that's Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Hey, love. Oh, are you making cookie dough? I'm going to settle. Good for you, baby. And you can't see Mona, but she's also there. She's just in the closet behind me. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to continue now onwards with my concealer, the instant concealer from Clarins, as usual. As usual, trying to kill that thing, and as usual, it just won't die. Anyway, how did you guys spend Christmas Eve and Christmas? Did you have a nice time visiting family or just, you know, hibernating at home with Netflix? We had a really wonderful Christmas Eve. We went to my family-in-law and we just had a splendid evening with wonderful food and I saw my niece and she's the most adorable little doll you have ever seen. Um, and then Christmas Day was pretty chill until the evening when unfortunately I was given the most important gift for Christmas, the gift that keeps giving. Courtesy of Nicola and courtesy of daycare, I got a stomach virus. <laughs> So that was pretty unpleasant. I was really knocked out on Sunday and yesterday I was still feeling not super peachy. I'm glad that I had pre-filmed that decluttering the rest of my collection uh, video already. Several days prior I had uploaded it, everything was done and yesterday I just had to like make a screenshot for a thumbnail and just write a few lines in my description box because I did not have the energy for more. I'm taking my Dior Backstage Foundation. I think at this point I'm really focused on just panning this foundation. And um, that's pretty much been all for me for the Christmas days. The two Christmas days were a bit low-key, a bit sickly. To be honest with you, everyone at home was a bit sickly because obviously Nicola was also sick um, with a stomach virus before he passed it on to me. My husband has been coughing for a couple of weeks now. Don't worry, it's not COVID. We've tested several times. But unfortunately, it did turn out to be bronchitis. His dad is a GP, so on Friday when we were there for Christmas Eve, he immediately listened to his lungs and he was like, Ooh, are those wheezing? So he is on antibiotics now. Overall, I'm glad that we have a chill week ahead of us because I don't think either of us is really up for much work or much very active sort of activities. But I'm curious to know what you guys did what did you get for Christmas? So what we have been doing now with my family-in-law for Christmas already for the last maybe two, three years is we, we don't give like everyone presents anymore because that's just super fucking stressful. Nobody has time for that and to like think about what to get for each individual person. We now do Secret Santa. I'm going to take my Hourglass Mood Light Powder now or whatever is left of it as you can see over here. That's not much. 
I am really trying my best to finish up whatever last bits I have before it goes into trash January 1st. But uh, yeah, like I said, so we now do Secret Santa. So online we do this like little lottery thing where everyone gets assigned one person. We also set a budget and the budget is usually not ridiculous. It's something... Oh, my eyebrows decided that they're going to take a different direction in life. Uh, we usually set the budget to be something very realistic, like 25 to 30 euros. And then what we also do is everyone puts their wish list so that uh, we don't give each other shit we don't need. Because we've done that in the past and I personally really, really dislike the element of surprise when it comes to presents, especially if you don't know someone very well, because you end up giving them shit they don't need. I've, end up, I've ended up with so many useless things that I didn't know what to do and I've either had to like find someone to give away to or I've basically had to trash. Just give your wish list and then people can choose one, two item from that wish list, whatever, and then you will be happy, they will be happy, everyone will be happy. I'm taking my Chanel Soleil and Chanel bronzer. And that is pretty much how have we, we have been um, solving the issue of how to gift each other presents the last couple of years. And I already knew who my secret Santa was pretty early on because when we started ordering presents for each other's secret Santa, Hubs and I had apparently ordered on the same day from the same place. And it's like a very like typical place in the Netherlands to order a bunch of shit from. It's like the Dutch eBay, it's called Paul.com. And we received several packages on the same day. And I got home, I was super excited. I didn't really look what was on the, whose name was on the envelope, the package. And it turned out that it was a present that he had gotten from me from one of the items on my wish list. And I was like, wait, did I order that book myself? It was a book, by the way. And I was like, wait, did I order that book myself? I don't think so. And then I realized, oh fuck, I spoiled the surprise. But like I said, I don't, I don't really care so much about surprises. To me, it's much more important that you make the person happy with whatever you got them. I thought I can show you my book. This is the book that I got. It is called Reality is Not What It Seems. The Journey to Quantum Gravity by Carlo Rovelli. For blush today, I'm going to pull out an oldie but a goodie. This is my Wild Honey blush from Becca. I first was introduced to Carlo Rovelli last year. And I think I've mentioned that before, but I really enjoyed the Royal Institution talks. Um, the ones that are like an hour long and they're usually given by professionals who are experts in a certain topic. And I specifically enjoy the more like astrophysics, astronomy and quantum physics because I, they, they make me feel so dumb <laughs> and I really masochistically enjoy that. But I've, re I've enjoyed so many of the talks and some of them have been accessible enough even for me as a biologist to be able to follow and somewhat understand what the scientists who present um, these, you know, theories and um, new novel developments in especially in physics and astrophysics they're quite difficult to grasp and I feel like when someone does a really good job at explaining something and they are a good science communicator, I am uh, very likely to look up if they have published any books. So that was the case with Carlo Rovelli. Carlo Rovelli is an Italian... I don't actually know what his specialty is. I don't know if it's astrophysics or quantum theory. It may be quantum theory. Anyway, he gave a talk about time on the Royal Institution and time is one of those concepts in... Um, theoretical physics that boggles my mind to this day. I'm going to grab my highlighter from Makeup Geek in the shade Psychedelic, which I just showed in my declutter and I thought I might as well just bust it out and use it a few times on camera. Anyway, so I watched his talk and he is adorable. He's, you know, a bit stereotypical to say, but very typically Italian, like very passionate. I really enjoyed his talk and I understood that he had written a book about time, which is called The Order of Time. And I immediately purchased that book at the time, I read it. And now for Christmas, one of the gifts that was on my wish list was one of his other books, which is more of like explaining, I think, general concepts. It's not so much focused on one topic, but it's a variety of different topics. And then because my husband is a sweetheart, he had actually uh, purchased all the things that were on my wish list and the other two items that were on my wish list were a little woodwick um, candle like one of those crackling candles I've been obsessed with those they are made by a brand called woodwick I'm pretty sure there are knockoffs of that 
but I'm not sure how good they are. So they have this like wooden e element in the middle. So when they burn, they also make that crackling sound as if you have a fireplace in the house. It's incredible. They smell amazing. They go on forever. And it's not as if I don't have two already, which are still going to last me for several months, probably even years. But I put one like a mini version of that on my wishlist because I couldn't really think of anything else, to be honest. Okay, enough rambling. Let's move a little bit into eyeball territory. So I want to do something which involves a more neutral type of crease. So I'm going to take out my trusty but goody, my statuesque from Pat McGrath Labs, and I'm going to pu put that through my crease. So that was the second item on my wishlist. And the last item on my wishlist was a little insert, like a silicone insert for a frying pan to make pofferches, which is like a Dutch eeny mini tiny pancake that you put powder sugar on top. Um, I know kids really like those, I know my uh, future daughter-in-law really likes those and I thought it would be really fun to have it so that when she visits I can make a pofferches for her and Nicola. And we already tried the silicone insert on Saturday because I immediately wanted to see how it works. It was pretty cool, we made the teeniest tiniest round pofferches and Nicola really enjoyed them, although he enjoyed them with Nutella because he's used to having pancakes with Nutella. So those were the three items on my wish list that my husband so kindly gifted all three of them to me. And of course, because I am a fool and I'm a clown, I decided on the 26th of January, in a brief moment of lucid, lucid clarity, when I, I was knocked out from the stomach virus, that I am going to purchase the Bridgerton palette from Pat McGrath Labs. I had already kind of made, made up my mind that I was going to buy it and uh, one of my friends also asked if I was going to purchase one for her. So I was on the website at 3 o'clock, a little bit worried whether the collection is going to sell out too fast because it was clearly specified that it will be in limited quantities. So I knew I had to be fast, but at the same time I thought I think Beth doesn't do the kind of crap anymore where things sell out in a couple of minutes. I think when she means limited quantities, she means don't wait for a week because it's not going to happen. You have to do it within one or two days, which is unfortunate if you don't have the money to spend at the time. Um, I received an email this morning from Pat McGrath Labs which said that the Bridgerton collection was sold out but that there would be a restock. So maybe there is a restock coming. Proceeding with the eye look, now I'm going to take the Celestial Odyssey palette and I'm going to take my Worker Pro from Sonia G and I'm going to take Citrine Envy and I'm going to apply Citrine Envy pretty much all over the lid and only leave like the inner one third free. So I decided after all that I really would like to have the palette, not because I had a stroke and all of a sudden I'm the biggest, hugest fan of pink eyeshadow, but because I was intrigued by the claim that there is an astral in there, allegedly that shade everyone is lusting after, the the sparkly multi-chrome purpley blue green shifter is an astral. We shall see. I need to touch it, I need to test it before I can confirm that it really is an astral because she has never put VR Blitz or Astral in a six pan before. She has in her look squads but not in a six pan and that was intriguing to me. So this shade does not apply the best with a brush as you can see but I, honestly I'm just doing a little bit of laying groundwork and blending and I don't really care so much whether it's super opaque. It's not super opaque, it's super patchy actually. It's very crumbly and it's not the kind of shade that goes on super well with a brush and I already knew that but I just want to um, do some blending before I apply a glitter type of product. So what did you get for Christmas? Did you get anything from the Bridgerton collection? Did you get the whole thing or did you just get one item or two items? Honestly, I think if you didn't try the Lunar Nude Highlighter and it was um, one of the colors from this collection spoke to you more, I hope that you got it because I do actually really like the formula of that highlighter. Now, what I'm going to do now is take a little bit of my glitter glue. This is Pixie Epoxy from Fairini Cosmetics. Just swipe a little bit on the back of my hand and then I'm going to use my fingers 
and apply that here in the inner corners and pretty much over the lid to be honest because I want to have now Citrine Envy with a bit more opacity and now I'm not going to bother anymore with a brush I'm just going to take my finger and apply Citrine Envy just like that over the lid because as you can see that significantly improves the shine and the pigmentation And now for our next exciting turn of events, ever since I got this palette I've wanted to do a look which pairs the purple and the green. And finally this day has come. I'm going to take the lavender purple now and put that in my inner corners. I think you can hear my son in the background, sorry about that. I haven't actually worn this, worn, I haven't actually worn this lavender shade on my lids much, I'm a little afraid that it looks really good on me as an inner corner highlight or as an accent in looks, but it won't really be too flattering if I put it all over my lid. But I know for some of you it's one of your favorite shades in this palette and it does apply beautifully. I'm going to take a bit of intensifies and apply that here on my lower lash line because I want to apply a bit of Citrine Envy also on my lower lash line, like so, and I don't want it to fly all over the place. Since this is a pet pairing, we need to do some layering and I think you already see where this is going because I'm super predictable like that, but we're going to now grab Utopian Dream and we're going to layer these two beautiful shades over top of some of the shades that we have already laid down but I've not completely made up my mind exactly what we're going to do. So, for starters, I'm going to take Astral Venusian Orchid and apply that over Citrine Envy just to intensify that sparkle a bit more. For that next step, I am going to take my other finger and I'm going to take the... I don't know the name of that shade, what is it called again? Astral Amethyst Moon. I'm going to take Astral Amethyst Moon and I'm going to also apply a bit of Astral Amethyst Moon because I think that might be fun over top of everything else we put down and I think also in my inner corner over top of the lavender because I think that might look really fun as well. Am I going to ruin the look? I don't know. We shall see. So I'm going to apply it right here over top of this lavender shade. Let's get you in closer to show you that I look like a disco ball. <laughs> So that was it for our last pet pairing of the year, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this look. Nothing too complicated, just a bunch of layering the way I like it. I hope that it's coming across that I look like a disco ball because when I look in the mirror, I see a bunch of different reflects on my eyes. Green, gold, purple, blue. The lip part of this look is also something very, very simple. I just went for the Affair Gloss by Lisa Eldridge because I'm just at home. Um, I feel a bit dehydrated, if I'm being honest. So I feel like something very moisturizing on my lips is necessary and these almost feel like lip oils. I hope you all have a fabulous New Year's Eve. I don't know that this would qualify as a New Year's Eve look, but you know what, if you wanted something simple and you wanted to create the disco ball effect, I think you would be pretty much in the vicinity with this sort of look. But anyway, anything you layer from Pat McGrath is going to give you that effect. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, this whole series in the past year or so. I think I started this series sometime in the beginning of last year and I've had so much fun doing it and I will probably just continue doing it because it seems to be one of the things that you enjoy most about my channel. Thank you so much for watching and we shall see each other again soon. Bye!